Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is uh, Shackleton the Explorer, and uh, he's very, very restless today, so he's not that interested in uh, being in the video. He's interested in the uh, food that uh, I often give him to entice him to to be in my videos, but uh, I'll just let him down. So I'm going to talk all about um, ocean tipping points. So a recent paper came out called got cat cat hair in my mouth. <laughs> a recent paper came out um, called The Quiet Crossing of Ocean Tipping Points. And we often, um, you know, talk about tipping points in the climate system. In fact, my last video, I was talking about the possibility of the terrestrial uh, vegetation tipping over from being a carbon sink to a uh, carbon source within a few decades. And then I specifically talked about the Amazon rainforest and, uh, you know, the um, what is happening there, you know, how that sink is um, rapidly declining, you know, and there's also the possibility of a collapse of the entire rainforest over to a grassland savanna type situation. Now, in the ocean, um, the paper, you know, The Quiet Crossing of Ocean Tipping Points, it talks about three main tipping points of the ocean, and they're all interrelated, of course. The ocean warming, uh, ocean acidification, and ocean deoxygenation. Now, of course, the ocean's a giant reservoir of heat and dissolved carbon. Since the beginning of the industrial um, era, industrial revolution, the oceans have taken up about 30 to 40 percent of all carbon that has been uh, emitted uh, by by uh, humans, and it's taken up about 93 percent of the additional heat of the warming of the planet. So climate, global warming is really ocean warming. You know, climate change is, you know, intricately affecting, intricately connected to the oceans and we oft, we don't give we don't talk about the oceans enough so just as a summary of some of the things you know the the stresses on the ocean that have been occurring is uh, the coral reefs we're having a massive decline of coral reefs and coral reefs are like the rainforests of the ocean so this is a very serious problem and this is from ocean warming right when the ocean warms too much the corals bleach and if the oceans cool down again in the regions where the coral corals bleach, then they can regenerate. But if that happens several years in a row, then the reefs just just die basically. And they're they're a haven for um, for 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 new fish. Like for uh, they're they're very important for the the ecosystem of the entire oceans. Uh, phytoplankton loss has been you know, is also a big concern. Phytoplankton are at the base of the food chain, and uh, with less and less phytoplankton, then that trickles up through the, cascades up through the entire food chain. You know, ocean plastics, um, you know, they last for, plastics last for an awful long time, and they get broken into smaller and smaller particles in the ocean, and then they're ingested by marine life, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a huge problem. And you know, we may think that, um, you know, we don't live, if you don't live near an ocean and, uh, or a big river going into an ocean, you know, you might think that, uh, well, the plastics you use don't have, have an impact, but it's a very, very tiny plastics that come, you know, even, even when you wash your clothes, you know, depending on the material your clothes is made of, you can get these small particles of plastic going into the wastewater and then finding their way through uh, systems into the environment. Uh, ocean current switching, the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, um, is, is, a, is a huge uh, risk. The, the AMOC's been slowing down. Uh, ocean stratification, as the ocean gets warmer and warmer, it becomes more and more stratified into layers with the hot water being on top, the hottest water being on top. And this reduces vertical mixing, which is important for bringing oxygen down from the surface uh, deep deeper. Um, and also the carbon sink, you know, things have to move in the vertical direction for carbon to move from the surface of the ocean down into the deeper ocean. And if there's less vertical mixing because of stratification, that problem, that's, that's a problem. 
Uh, with the warming, when the sea surface temperature gets above 26 and a half degrees, then you get a lot more um, amplification of hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, depending on where you are on the planet is what, on what you call them. And, uh, you know, these are all tropical storms. So they get more intense, larger storms and uh, cause tremendously more damage. And of course, the, the ocean acidification is a problem. Uh, the ocean's absorbing lots of CO2. And uh, as I said, it's a big sink for carbon dioxide. And of course that forms carbonic acid and that makes the oceans more acidic. It lowers the pH value. And the lack of oxygen um, near the bottom in a lot of these dead zones is occurring. Um, you know, as you warm water, then the ability of water to absorb, to dissolve gases uh, reduces, so the dissolved uh, oxygen in the water is less. So, but uh, also there's tremendous migration of species. It's not just migration, it's migration to the poles because as the as the ecosystems where species live um, warms and the rainfall uh, decreases or, you know, or, or, or actually in some cases tremendously increases when it changes, then that niche, that species niche is no longer that favorable to the species, so it migrates. So this is happening a lot in the oceans. We're seeing a lot of um, warm water fish uh, heading further and further north and south away towards the poles. So. One of the issues is that, uh, you know, things generally seem, you know, happen a bit slower in the oceans, but the we're getting fast changes in the oceans and they can become very difficult to re reverse. And then we have these sort of tipping points of the ocean. And you know, if you look at the math of tipping points, you basically have a threshold. You pass a limit in which the system goes from one stable state, you know, rapidly changes into another stable state. It's very nonlinear. Um, mathematically, it's called a bifurcation or a regime shift, and the system just gets rearranged. And there's often something called hysteresis, where, you know, if you cross a tipping point, um, the system changes, and then when you try to go back to the original state, there's a, it doesn't go back down and follow the same path. It's delayed and delayed. You have to change the parameter much, much lower than where the where the tipping point in the in in the forward direction went. So you can get this hysteresis or lag. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, basically, you know, we talk an awful lot about extreme weather events, right? Um, but, you know, they're atmospheric events. There's also extreme ocean, in quotes, weather events, if you like, uh, like marine heat waves. Yeah, you know, so the main ones that I'm going to talk about that are in this paper are marine heat waves uh, and warming. Uh, hypoxia, so lack of oxygen, and also also the um, ocean acidification. Okay, so um, I'm going to get right into this uh, paper. My screen just went off. Okay, okay, so so this is the uh, paper, the quiet crossing of ocean tipping points. And before I get into this. Yeah, let me just uh, talk about, so the, the Amazon rainforest collapse, um, when I, you know, it, it, it's happening very, very fast. Uh, it, does it take the lead amongst abrupt climate change tipping points? It's, it's a toss up between the Amazon rainforest and, and the, um, you know, the, the, the Arctic, the Arctic uh, loss, of, loss of sea ice. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please, uh, please do so. You know, you can just uh, Google YouTube Paul Beckwith. And so these are the, the video series I did on the, um, on the Amazon rainforest. And uh, yeah, so let me go back uh, to, to this paper. So anthropogenic climate change profoundly alters the ocean's environmental conditions, which in turn impact marine ecosystems. Some of these changes are happening fast and may be difficult to reverse. So they have, they'll have this hysteresis effect or they won't be able to reverse. So the identification and monitoring of such changes, which also includes tipping points, is an ongoing and emerging research effort. Um, you know, climate induced tipping points are traditionally associated with singular catastrophic events relative to natural variations of dramatic negative impact. 
So we've got these high probability, high impact ocean tipping points, basically the warming of the ocean, the ocean acidification, and the deoxygenation. These are these they they uh, these type of things may be fragmented both regionally and in time, but they add up to global dimensions. Okay, and and this paper argues that these ocean tipping points in combination with gradual changes need to be addressed as seriously as single singular catastrophic events in order to prevent the cumulative and often compounding negative societal and earth system impacts. Okay, so um, getting right to the uh, guts of the paper, um, I'll look at the figures here. So you've got these physical drivers like radiative forcing and additional factors such as the albedo changes. So these physical changes, um, you know, we, we, the human brain wants to think of things as being a sort of a smooth, gradual curve. But in, in actuality, we have these nonlinear tipping points here. Um, so I'm talking about the ones in the ocean specifically. So we've got these biogeochemical drivers. So CO2 being absorbed by the ocean uh, reduces, the pH, uh, reduces the pH causes the acidification and there's inputs such as there's nitrogen from the land, there's dust deposition, um, the warming, there's the, war the great warming reduce, reduces the oxygen solubility. So there's less oxygen in the ocean. Um, so, so we have these biogeochemical climate system elements and also the ecosystem boundary conditions. So the environmental stressors and confounding factors such as overfishing Invasive species and biodiversity loss cause these these um, regime shifts, if you like. Okay, these are some of the um, areas of the ocean uh, that are seriously affected by the different things. So we're getting coastal acidification and deoxygenation in these regions here, and also on these coastlines here. Uh, we're getting uh, open ocean deoxygenation uh, in the Pacific here, in this vast region here. Of course, Arctic sea ice reduction, marine permafrost thaw, and polar acidification up in this region. And uh, we're getting large-scale uh, ocean circulation changes, okay, uh, both in the, uh, just off Antarctica and in the in the Atlantic Ocean. So this is the you know Gulf Stream coming up and the overturning circulation uh, being slowed down because of the the, uh, uh, the the melting of all the ice and the fresh water in here. So these are the you know the AMOC uh, Atlantic Meridional overturning circulation risks. Of course the coral reefs, warm water coral reef degradation most severe over in this region, uh, Australia, you know, Indonesian islands, etc. you know, in this region here where the water is extremely warm, causing these severe um, coral bleaching events. And then the El Nino and monsoon alterations in these regions. Okay, so we're getting all of these different stressors. Um, and I'll just go down to the, uh, the other figure, which is here. Okay, so this is the time scale of the large scale ocean mixing and circulation. Okay, so we have, uh, you know, time zero where, where the Gulf Stream comes up and the water uh, cools down and is saltier, so sinks to the bottom at time zero, and then it recirculates down. It takes hundreds and hundreds of years, 500 years, to reach this point. And then as it continues on here, it's like 900 years and 1,300 years, and then it will surface and come back here. So we've got these ocean circulation patterns which are being modified and rewired um, and once they you know pass the threshold and switch they'll reach a new configuration and that will severely impact uh, climate and uh, extreme weather events and and uh, things so we're really playing with fire here um, and this paper you know is one of many that have come out recently on the severe effects that um, we're all experiencing from uh, abrupt climate change Thank you for listening and uh, yeah, we'll chat soon.